Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today, is our lesson number 78. Day 78, day 3078, 3 is to indicate that we are in the third edition, third edition day 78, we are on page number 285 and we, today we will begin the topic of data analysis. Turn to page 285 in your book, make sure the book is in front of you. Data analysis is a very important part of the exam, very important portion of the math, math exam and that's what we'll start today. The very first topic that we'll cover in this part of the in this part of the exam is what is known as absolute absolute frequency versus relative frequency what's the difference and most of the time when we're talking about absolute frequency people do not say absolute frequency people simply say frequency so what's the difference between when one is talking about simply frequency and one is when one is speaking of relative frequency? That's what we have to understand. Absolute frequency simply tells us how many times something happens. How many times? How many times something happens? And that's the absolute frequency. For example, if I tell you that an exam was given and four students got an A. A student getting an A, that's an event. Four students got an A. It happened four times. The grade of A was gotten by a student four times. And that's what it tells us. Whereas the relative frequency tells us how often, how many times something happens compared to, compared to, or if you like, relative to, relative to the total, total number of events. And that carries more information. That carries more information. Now we're talking about relative frequency. And now, if I'm not simply telling you that four students got an apple, uh, uh, not an apple, I meant to say an A. Uh, now, 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 now we're not being told that four students got an A. Now we are being told something more than that. We are, told, we are being told that four students got an A out of, out of five who took the exam. That's pretty impressive. So that's relative frequency. When we are told that something happened four out of five times, or four out of four out of four out of ten times, or four out of uh, four out of a hundred times, that's a relative frequency. Do you understand? If if you simply come up to me and tell me that you spoke to a few people in your town and forty people, forty people or four hundred people if you like, told you that they will vote for candidate A. 400 people said they will vote for candidate A. That's good. That's good to, good to know that it's going to get about 400 votes. But it doesn't have much meaning. Now, on the other hand, you tell me that you surveyed 500 people in the town. And out of 500 people, four, 400 out of 500 that you surveyed told you that they're going to vote for candidate A. Well, that's very good news for candidate A. Because 400 out of 500 in the survey said they will vote for him. You understand? If you do, again, if you do a survey in the town to find out who are the homeowners and who are the renters, same exact thing. Simply telling somebody that 400 households in your town are homeowners, it has no meaning. It, has not, it doesn't tell you much. Now, on the other hand, if it, that's, that's absolute frequency. Now, on the other hand, if you say that 400 out of 500 households that you surveyed told you that they are homeowners as opposed to renters, that's absolute frequency. Now, when we're talking about absolute frequency, it can be presented in three different ways. So, if you're talking about 4 out of 100, it can be presented in three different ways. This information of 4 out of 100 can be presented as fraction, 4 out of 100, just, just like it says. Or you can present it as a percentage, 4%. Or the same information can be presented as a decimal. All three of these forms are equally acceptable they convey the same exact information, obviously. And it's up to the presenter as to how he or she wants to convey the idea as a percentage or as a decimal or a fraction. Do you understand? We're ready to do now the problem that you see on the next page, 
data for which is already on the blackboard as you can see clearly problem number example number 4.1.3 4.1.3 here we are told that we surveyed 25 families 25 families were surveyed and they were asked how many kids do you have number of children in each of the 25 families and the raw data is already on the blackboard now we're going to present it in the form of first absolute frequency we're going to make a tally where we're going to present it in absolute frequency and then we're going to present it in relative frequency let's do it here so number of children number of children we have 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 And here we're going to have absolute frequency. But as we just said, I'm going to stop saying the word absolute. Most of the time you will just hear frequency. Do you understand? Let's get going. Let's do the tally. Let's see what we have. Okay, we have to pay attention. So stay with me. 1, 2, 0, 4, 1. 1, 2, 0, 4, 1. 3, 3, 1, 2, 0. 3, 3, 2, 0. 1, 2, 0, 4, 5, 2, 3, 2, 4, 5, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 4, 1, 3, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 0, 2, 3, 1, 3, 0, 2, 3, 1, what do we have? Let's find out. We should have 3, let's have 5, then we have a 7, and a 6, and a 3, and a 1. These numbers that we see here, these are absolute frequency. It just tells you the three families who were surveyed told you they have no children. We've surveyed we surveyed a few family, we surveyed a few family, out of which three said they have, they have no children. Now let's present the same information in absolute frequency, in relative frequency term. Relative frequency, when you want to present it as a relative frequency, we, we can present it as, as a fraction, 3 out of 25. Why 3 out of 25? Why 3 out of 25? Because, because 25 families were surveyed. The data, as you can see, there is 25. And when we add these up, they better also add up to 25. 3 plus 7 is 10. 10 plus 5 is 15. And then 6 and a 3 and a 1 is 10. You see, it's 25. So 3 out of 25 families have no children. 5 out of 25 families have one child. 7 out of 25 have two. 6 out of 25 have three. And 3 out of 25 have four. And 1 out of 25 said they have five children and we can leave it like this there is nothing wrong with it there is absolutely nothing wrong with it we can just leave it like this or if we like we can present it as percentage let's do it as percentage let's do it as percentage because it's out of 25 is very easy so 3 out of 25 when you want to present when we want to convert it into percentage per the word percent as we know means out of 100 so somehow we have to convert the bottom into a 100 we can convert the bottom into 100 by multiplying it by 4 if you're going to multiply bottom by 4, we must multiply the top by 4. So 3 out of 25 turns out is the same as 12 out of 100, which is a 12%. In other words, all we have to do is multiply all of these frequency by 4, and we will have our percentage. So 3 out of 25 will be four, 3 times 4 is 12, 5 times 4 is 20, 28, 7 times 4, 6 times 4 will be 24, 12, and 4%. That's all. 12, 20, 28, 24, 12, and 4. That per these percentages also better add up to 100. Of course they have to. 2 and 8 is 10, and then we have 4, 4 and 2, that's another 10, that's 20. So 0, carry 2. If you carry 2, 2 plus 2, plus two is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8, and then 1 and 1. And that's it, we're done. That's all it is. These are, these are relative frequencies, these are absolute frequencies. 
Now what happens is that what happens is that once in a while, once in a while, well not actually not actually once in a while, actually quite often, we are not just dealing with 25 observations, we are dealing with huge data sets. In which in which case, if you were to present it like this for each single possible event, you'll be there forever. For example, let's take a look at the next one. Let's take a look at let's take a look at example 4.1.4 on the next page, on page number. 4.1.4 on the next page, page 286. 4.1.4. Here we have 30 students. We have 30 students. We are told that 30, 30 students. Took a test. And below are the results. Below are the results from least to greatest. And here is what we are told 62, 63, 68, 70, 72, 72, 72, 75, 76, 76, 76, 76, 78, 78. 82, 85, my handwriting is getting atrocious, 82, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 85, 6 of them, 86, 87, 88, 91, 91, 92, 95, 97, and finally 100. Now what happens, what's going to happen here is that, if you look at it closely, we'll see that we have 18 different distinct entries here. If you were, if you were, to, if you were to present it like this, we'll have 18 different, as I said, distinct entries. Let's count them, shall we? 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. This is five. This this is one kind of entry. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Eighteen different entries. And if you were to present it just like we did here, with each distinct possibility, such as. The scores here, distinct scores, 62, 63, 68, 70, 72, 75, 76, 78, and so on and so forth. We have 162, 163, 168, 170, 3 72s, 175, 4 70, 76, 278 and we're going to keep on going and we'll have 18 different ent ent entries. It can get quite cumbersome, quite annoying, quite laborious. So what do we do? Here's what we do. Obviously we cannot present every distinct possible result. So what do we do? We put the observations in group. We put the observations in groups or if you like or if you like different ranges and that's what we're going to do here here, are the, here we have the scores and here we're going to have the frequency but here instead of having instead of having a distinct score having instead of having each individual distinct score we'll have a range we'll have a range for example 60 to 79 70 to 70 72. If it's 79, how can it be 70? If it's a 60 to 69, 60 to 69, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, 90 to 100. That's it, just four different categories, and we'll condense the whole thing, and that is also just as acceptable.
and that's what we usually do because instead of just having 30 students we could have as many as 3,000 students or 30,000 students and obviously we're not going to just list uh, and if the score is out of 100 then there are 100 different uh, different outcomes from a score of 101 actually to, uh, to, to be 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 technical because somebody could have a zero score all the way up to one two three all the way up to hundred we're not going to make 101 uh, different separate entries we're going to put them in range we're going to condense the whole thing so let's see how many do we have between 60 and 69 we have three between 70 and 79 we have one three here four five five and four is nine and two eleven here we have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's 9 and 10. And here we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's make sure that they add up to 30. They have to add up to 30. 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 plus 1 is 10, and 10 and 10, 10, 20 and 30. It does add up to 30. And if you like, we can just leave it like this. We can just leave it like this, or we can go one step further, and that will be the absolute frequency. absolute frequency or if you like we can present it in terms of relative frequencies instead of simply saying three instead of simply saying that three people three people had a score of between 60 and 69 or 11 people had a score of between 70 and 79 it happened 11 times now we'll give relative frequency which will tell us it happened 11 times, 11 different students got a score between 70 and 79, out of how many? Out of, we just had it, out of 30 I believe, out of 30, so here we go. So we can put it in 3 out of 30, 11 out of 30, 10 out of 30, or 6 out of 30. This is, this is not lined up all the way, but you get the idea. You can just leave it like this, or you can present it in terms of percentages. We can present it in terms of percentages like 3 out of 30 is very easy, it's just 10%. And if 3 out of 30 is 10%, then obviously 6 out of 30, which is twice as much, 3 as 3 versus 6. If 3 out of 30 is 10%, 6 out of 30 would be 20%. That's also very easy. 10 out of 30 is also very easy. 10 out of 30 is just one third. One third is just 33 and 1%. Let's figure out, let's figure out what can we do about 11 out of 30. How do we convert this into percentage? 11 out of 30. 11 out of 30. Let's take a look at it, shall we? In order for us to convert something into a percentage, as we as we already spoke, said many many times, percent means out of 100. What can we do to 30 to make it 100? Well, we can multiply 30. We can take a 30 and multiply it by 3 and one third. 30 divided by 3 and 1 third will be exactly 100 because 30 times 3 is 90 and a third of 30 is 10. Voila! So if you multiply top and bottom this figure by 3 and 1 third, we, we are home, home free. We will be home free. Now there we go. Now we have whatever the result is, it's out of 100. It's out of 100. The bottom is out of 100. We just have to figure out what top is. Shall we? Let's do it together. Let's do it together. 11 times 3 is 33 and 11 times 3rd is just going to be 11 3rd it's just going to be 11 3rd let's do it in the bottom here 11 thirds. so we have we should have done it bottom, on the bottom here so 30 so we have 33 plus 11 thirds 11 thirds 11 thirds can be written as can be written as 9 thirds plus 2 thirds and 9 thirds of course is just 3 so it's 33 plus 3 and 2 thirds so it jumps out with 36 and 2 thirds 36 and 2 thirds and these percentages also when we add them up I'm going to erase all of this bottom part because otherwise it looks actually just leave it there you get the idea we'll put a demarcation One. Now, when we add up these percentages, they better also add up to 100. They have to. They must. Because they are percentages. Or, or if they were fractions, they better add up to 1. So let's get going, shall we? We see a 2 thirds and a third. 
a two third and a third is a whole. So when we add up these two fractions, we get a one. So let's carry the one, and we'll have one and a six is nine. Nine plus three is twelve. Now we better not get twelve. Let's start again, shall we? Six plus one is seven, not nine. Six plus one is seven, and seven plus three is ten. There we go. We get a zero. We get a zero, and carry one again. 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, and then 3 plus 2 is another 5. There we go, you see? 100%. Well, that's all it is. What are we going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow, we'll do the next topic that you see on the following page, obviously. And the topic is bar graph. Bar graph on page number 287. That's where we're going to pick up from at the bottom of page 287. And the example that we're going to do is uh, examples that we're going to do are on the next page, page 288, obviously. And that's where we're going to pick up from tomorrow, okay? Bye now.